All right, here it is. Here's the diagram. We're going to break it down. We're going to break down the subnetting diagram. I'm going to show you how to use it. Okay? Even though more or less you looked at it when I saw it when I was doing the subnet maps in the previous lecture. Now, basically, as you can see, you have your bit values 128, 64, 32, 16, 8, 4, 2, 1. Then this big black dot is a decimal. Then 128, 64, 32, 16, 8, 4, 2, 1. Okay? So, if you have, let's say, the line is right there. So how many bits do you have on? Well, eight. Everything to the left of that line, those bit values are on. All right? So you have eight and eight, right? Then you have, okay, all right? You have these eight that are, oh, okay, I'm going to use the mouse. Well, I got a mouse right here. Technology, technology. Okay, so you have all these eight that are on right here, and then you have these three that are on right here, and this is where the line is. So if you were to add this, the mass would be what? 255, 255, 255, 224. Remember the bit to decimal, three bits on, on the last octet. So that means that your focus, you're focusing on the last octet altogether. This is where your focus is at, on the fourth octet. So the line is separating, this red line that you see right here, it's separating the network side, the subnets, from the host side, okay? This right here tells you, I put up here, the bit value to the left of the line will always be your network increment. So your network is incrementing by 32. The sum of these bit values well, that's wrong right there. It's not 15. It's 32. I mean, that's 31, sorry. The sum of the bit, and I did it, I did it again down here. What's wrong with me? I'll fix it later. Uh, yeah, 31 right here. Because if you were to add all these, if you had to add 1, 2, 4, and 8, and 16, it comes out to 31, if you wanted to add. But if you just do one less 32, that gives you a 31. All right, so he says the sum of the bit values to the right of the line will give you the number of calculated, uh, uh, the numbers to calculate for broadcast. So this number right here is what we call, or what I call, the broadcast calculation number. It will help you calculate for broadcast addresses. And this would be your network increment. And how many subnets can you have? Now this is where... You say, well, Labs, why are you, if you're lying, if our focus is the fourth octet, right, which is over here, why are you counting for subnets all the way up here? Because this is a class B address. And the default mask for a class B is right here. Let me copy paste this real quick. The default mask for a class B address is right there. So I have to start counting for subnets there. If it would have been a class C address, then I would have started counting subnets from right here. It would have been 2, 4, 8. But since it's a class B, I have more networks that are available to me. Keep that in mind. There's a website that I think all of you should check out, which is called Subnetting Questions. Dot com. Again, that's called subnettingquestions.com. And you're going to get, it's not really, a, they give you explanations. They just give you problems, problems, and problems, and problems. And they always use, which I'll explain, the zero network. And they, they always use it. And they'll give you questions with a class B address, like this right here, like this one right here. Where's my mouse? Okay. Uh, like this one right here. Okay. Where they ask you how many subnets you have. And then since you're in the fourth octave, you say, well, I'm just going to count from right here. Well, no, because if you have a class B, you can count from all the way from the default or what's called the class full boundary of the address, the class full boundary of the address. So you do have 2,046 subnets. Now, how did I come up with that? I know there's a formula. I know that you do 2 to the N minus 2 and all that good stuff. I don't do that. You know... Just to make an analogy, 
a lot of us play dominoes, right? Uh, we all play dominoes, and when the chi when you're left with too many, you know, I guess chips, if you if you will, uh, you have to count to see how many you got. Have you seen these old guys that play dominoes when they flip their chips over? They're like, and they already they count that thing like three seconds. I'm like, Jesus. Well, this is the same thing. So what I do is I know I'm counting by two and doubling as I go. So two, four, eight, sixteen, thirty-two. You double. Fit two fifty-six. 512, 1024, 2046. Just double as you go till you get to the line. No, I, there's been people out there that have heard, and I think that's cool that these people have done that. They've actually memorized what 2 to the 13 is, 2 to the 16, 2 to the 15. They've memorized it, and that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Whatever helps you when you go take that test, the goal of this course is for you to pass your CCNA, not to be a math genius. Okay, the goal is to pass the CCNA, but IP version four, you don't need to be a math genius. As long as you know how to count by two, you'll be good to go. All right. Now, you see, I got okay, so I got 2,046 2, subnets, and then for host, I count the same way: two, four, eight, sixteen, thirty-two minus two. On the host side, on the host side, you always, 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 always subtract two. Why? Because of your network ID and your broadcast address. Those are two addresses that are not based on the mass, depending on what they come out to be, but you also try to because you have a subnet ID and your broadcast address. You can use those, you lose those two, and you can only assign whatever's in between. Whatever's in between. Now, here, you see that I did not subtract, if I can control the mouse here, it's a little crazy mouse. All right, I did not subtract two here because I'm using the zero network. And I'll put my mouse down now because I want to get serious here now. You know, it's really getting me crazy anyway. Uh, what is the zero network? The zero network is the very first network, the zero, and the very last network, which in this case will be 224. How do I know that? Because your subnet mask, 255, 255, 224, that number, 224, or 240, or 248, or 252, that is your last network. That will always be your last network. So when you're using the zero network, when you're using, when you're using the zero network, you will use the zero and use your very last network. So in this case, that you're incoming by 32, you have zero, 32, 64, 96, 128, 160, 192, 224, okay? Well, if you really have more, really, because I just came up to here, you keep going, 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 you, keep, you can have the possibility of that many networks, but then it starts jumping into another, this, will definitely jump into, an, you know, it starts getting a little bit more and more and more, okay? But you will have, you know, normally the 224, since that's where the mask is, that's what your last network would be. If you don't use the zero network, if you do not use the zero network, then I would have subtracted two right here, I would have 2044, 2044. That's not the case with today's technology. In today's IOSs, on the routers, there is a command that's called IP subnet zero. It's on by default. That allows the router to use, to understand the zero network. So you don't have to be worried about that. If you type it over again, you know, oh, IP subnet zero, that's just fine. Nothing's gonna happen, okay? But now you are allowed to use the zero network. Why am I explaining this? Because in your test, they're gonna mess with your mind. They're gonna ask you, if using the zero network, and you have this mask with this network, what is the eighth subnet's last IP address? Add, so there's key things in there. There's key things. Are you using the zero network? Yes, 
using the zero network with this class of address using the eighth subnet what is the last available IP address so now you gotta count starting from zero let's say it's 32 right zero 32 64 96 128 I said it was 224 didn't I? yeah I did 224 was the last network so 224 and 31 is 255, 254 uh, will be the last available uh, IP address if you're using the zero network. If you're not using the zero network, then that whole world changes. That the whole world changes. Okay? So be very careful when you're looking at one of those questions if they tell you use the zero network or do not use the zero network. Okay? But anyway. So here's your dividing line. Remember, this is the, I put this line here because I just wanted you to understand why I started counting all the way from back here. And I just started counting from here down. All right? Because this is how many subnets you are able to have. You're able to have more networks. You can have more networks. But again, your focus is the last octet. That's why I counted those eight networks. And then uh, in the whole side, you always, always subtract two. And then once you add this, which I had it wrong earlier, I put thir it's 31. It's 31. That's it. And guess what? And again, I'm giving this away before time, but we'll have, I'll show you two different ways of getting this. There's your wall car mask right there, 31. It's 0, 0, 0, 31. There's your wall car mask. And once we get to that lecture, I'm going to prove to you that both of the methods work exactly the same. All right, so once you draw that line, look at all the answers you got. Look at all the answers you got. You got your bid value. This is the diagram. This is what you need to do. This is your first step. Once you find that mask and you know that bid table, all right, so if they give you a 224 or a 240 or a 248, you know how many bits you need to go in in whatever octet. You know where to draw that line so you can find that number. Once you find that number, it's over. It's over. Because you use increment either on the fourth or the third. It doesn't matter. You already got the answers to whatever it is you need. To whatever it is you need. Now in the bottom example, it's a... Uh, let me use the mouse. Let me use a touchpad. This is a crazy mouse. See, look, look, it's... It's moving by itself. Stop. Runaway mouse. And again here, same question as above, different class of address. Okay, obviously, but again, this is still 32. Made a mistake. I mean 31. Why do I keep saying that? All right, it is 31. Sorry about that. And you can see the amount of subnets. Different class, though. Different class. is a class C. So therefore, I started counting just on the, that's the, that's the only way I can go because the, the boundary line is right here between the third and the fourth octet. I can't go beyond that. I can't go beyond that. So 248, I'm using the zero network because I didn't subtract two there. I'm using the zero network. So I have eight networks that increment by 32 with 30 hosts on each network. So you can see the difference, all right, when using the diagram, if you're using a class B address, we have a lot more networks where if you have a class C address, you only have so many networks because you cannot move the line beyond the classful boundary yet. Because if you do move the line beyond the classful boundary, now you're doing route summarization. Now we're getting into a whole new other another world altogether there. Okay? We're now just doing what's called this. It's just, I'm just showing you really how to use this diagram. And this is what you need to do. The different aspects of the diagram. The network incrementation. The broadcast calculation number. How you're counting for host. Okay, which is, let me use the arrow keys and the shift key here. How you count for, not host, I'm sorry, subnets. Or... how you count for host and you subtract two. It's showing you all this stuff that all that's there. 
And again, this is your wild card mask. 0, 0, 0, 31. So again, learn this diagram. Learn this diagram. Read the things on it. All right, I'm going to save it. That way when I, when you get it, the right answers are on there. Okay. But, and again, if there's mistakes, just uh, send an email. Say, hey, Laz, I think you, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, okay, yeah, you're right. It's this. No big deal. Uh, but again, learn this diagram. You learn this, and really it's just learning the bit values, drawing the line, there's your increment, done. That's how fast you got to be. And the only reason I tell you that you need to learn this and be quick about it, because once you take, because, again, I strongly urge you to take the CCNA 200-120. If for some reason you can't do it, whatever the case may be, I understand. The only reason I tell you that is because it's going to be, it's going to be a lot better for you. It's one exam, you're a full-blown associate. I know they have the CSAT now that you can take and they can go on to other, um, you can go beyond the CCNA, you can go CCNA wireless, CCNA security and all that good stuff. But again, get that CCNA uh, and with this, when you start answering questions based on, you know, subnetting or what have you, you need to be quick about it. That's why I always say 30 seconds, 30 seconds, less than 30 seconds, quick, less than that. Okay? Because there's a lot, quite a lot more questions out there with switching and routing that you need to pay close attention to. Close ones you start getting into spanning tree and all these VLANs and uh, split horizon and all this. You need to take your time. Not to mention you got three simulations to do. So you want to give yourself some extra time, right? So it's, it's I believe it's a minute and 30 seconds per question, and then you have 10 minutes for simulation. When it comes to questions on the OSI, standards, cabling, and, uh, and IPs, anything with IPs, whether it be summarization, VLSM, class full, class list, submitting, submitting, period. You should be able to answer that, boom, 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 because the questions are not complex. They are not. They are not. And it's the same concept. It's the same concept. Okay? All right, so here's your diagram. Learn the diagram. Learn the anatomy of it and what each part does. And that's what I'm trying to or, or try to explain in this particular lecture. Okay? Last time. Increment number, broadcast calculation number, counting for host. I mean, counting for subnets, left to right, counting for host, right to left. And then your wall card mask is right there. Your broadcast calc number becomes your wall card mask. See you in the next lecture.